Hi, I'm sure like many of you when traveling around the country, visiting friends and family, I always check out their local Facebook marketplace, in case anything takes my interest. And on one particular occasion when traveling up north, I spotted this for five pounds. So after the usual, is it still available? Yes. Can you say what's broken about it? No. I mean, how do you know it's broken? Is it not turned on? Not read discs? Is it in half? I don't know, it's my son's. I hate when communication with the family breaks down, but for whatever reason, for five pounds, it's worth it. I'll take it. See you tomorrow. And after a few more back and forth to arrange logistics, we ended with... I'll leave it in the recycling cupboard. Put the money through the door. Illicit. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I actually just want to be clear. She was very helpful. And if by some miracle you are watching, thanks very much. Comment below. Okay, so let's see how broken it really is. It unfortunately came on its own, but it uses a standard kettle lead for power, so I've got loads of those lying around at home, but I did have to go out and get a proprietary AV cable. A controller. The little connector thing I need to plug it in, as I got ripped off by in the controller. And a game. Yes, I'm that confident. And at a fifth of the price of the console, I think it was worth the risk. So it's all connected up and I've got it going through my RetroTink, just so I have a HDMI output, as it's the most convenient monitor to use at the moment. Although now I'm just realising it doesn't have any speakers, so I'll have to check for audio later. Well, it's looking good so far. This is actually my first time on one of these generations of Xbox. At the time I was more in the PlayStation camp. So I'll just have a little poke around the menus and see if it all seems to be working. Well, it looks like I can read the hard disk. Okay, I'll just pop a game in now and just check that's all working. Well, this is taking longer than expected. Well, this doesn't seem right. Maybe we found the fault. Yep, it's definitely not ejecting. Well, if that's the only fault, then it's not so bad. Okay, let's open it up, give it a clean and a bit of a service and see if I can fix that drive. The screws are unfortunately hidden here. I could just burst through the stickers, but it pains me to do so. So I'm going to try and peel it back as carefully as I can, even though it'll probably still look rubbish in the end, but I gotta try. So for that, I need to bring the heat. Or an old hairdryer, which I'll also use to help remove the rubber feet. I'll clean off the old double-sided tape and put on some fresh stuff when I put it all back together. So using a plastic spudger and heating the sticker a bit, I'll carefully peel it back from the corner so I can get to the screw. Okay, whilst I'm unscrewing it enough to get its top off, let's talk about Xbox. After Sony's boom onto the console market, Microsoft started to get a little concerned about the rise in computing in people's homes that wasn't running Microsoft software. Too many pies without their finger in. Without being able to get a foothold in the door of any existing console manufacturers, and with interest from four keen developers from the DirectX group, DirectX being a collection of their multimedia APIs, which unsurprisingly comes in handy for game development, it wouldn't be long before the Xbox was born. And on the 10th of March in the year 2000, it was first announced here at the Game Developers Conference in San Jose, California. Locations may not be accurate for budgetary reasons. There was scepticism whether Microsoft could crack the console market, but their ace up their sleeve would be it be based on PC hardware, essentially a Pentium 3 running a modified Windows 2000 kernel, meaning it would be easier for developers to port their games over to the new platform, including Bungie with their killer-exclusive Halo. 
back when Halo had developers working on it. Okay, let's get back to it. So the drives are held in with three more hex screws, and then the hard drive is also screwed into this bracket. Wow, those plugs are tight. With it all out, you can see the motherboard. Which is so dusty, it could probably be a member of a Sylvanian family. I'm going to remove everything as I first want to give it a good clean. And there's some more maintenance I want to do now it's all opened up. And that involves unplugging a few more plugs, removing these screws on the power board, and then the rest of the screws holding in the motherboard. The fan is clipped in and it's pretty tight. It took a bit of effort to get out, but it definitely needs a good clean. So one major issue with these Xboxes, like many reasonably older electronics, is with its capacitors. Well, one in particular, its clock capacitor, located here. And why this one in particular? It's just a bad cap. That's right, Microsoft cheaped out on earlier revisions. Everything before 1.6, which resulted in quite ironically it becoming a ticking time bomb before it leaks its corrosive guts all over the board. There's no need to replace it, all you have to do is remove it. It's only there to keep the console's time for a few minutes whilst you're moving it from room to room. And as I'm not going to be playing it that much, I don't think I'll need it. Plus, if I ever mod it, I can just get it to update the time from the internet. So it's just not worth it. There's just, there's no point. So the capacitor I'm replacing is a 2.5 volt, one farad super cap. And I'm just going to add some flux and some fresh solder before removing. Lucky I got to it when I did, as as you can see, it's just starting to leak. So I'll clean it all up and pop a new one in. There we go, like new. The next bit of maintenance is to replace the thermal paste under the heat sinks as after a while and from heat of use it can dry up and not be as effective. And to do that all you need to do is remove these incredibly easy to remove clips. This took a while as I was worried about the plastic snapping but in the end I managed to pry them off. With the clips off, the heatsink on the processor managed to come off easily, but the one on the GPU was welded on. So rather than just prying it off and potentially damaging it, it's time to bring on the heat again. Obviously not too much, but a bit of heat should be enough to loosen it. And voila! Now to clean off the old paste from the boards and the heatsink. I'll just be using IPA, and time. And with it cleaned off to the best I can, I'll apply some more paste and reset the heat sinks. Now to fix the drive. I'm hoping the reason it won't eject is that the band that goes between the gears is dirty or stretched. But I'm guessing the whole thing's dirty, so I'll open it up and give it a clean. As expected, it's pretty dusty, which can't help with it trying to open. So this is the band that opens the drawer, 
it just hooks between these two wheels. It looks a bit stretched, but I'll clean it up first and see if that helps. Whilst I have it open, I'll reapply some lubricant on all the moving parts. I tend to use silicon lubricant as it can be used on plastic and metal. And put it all back together. Right, now I can start it up and get that game in. Ah, probably should have tested before putting it all back together. Fine, I'll order a new band and see if that'll do it. Okay, here's the new band, let's swap them over. Well, this one's definitely tighter, so hopefully that'll be it. Right, let's test it before putting it all back together this time. Yeah, that's a relief. Okay, I guess I better check it actually reads discs in case the laser is also knackered. Okay, here goes. Let's pop the game in and check it works. Well, this is promising. Ah, oh, amazing. Right, I guess I should check there's also sound, so let's connect it to something with speakers. Oh, that's good to hear. Let's jump to some gameplay. And there is most definitely game music. So I'll tone that down in case there's any issues with playing it. So the game I picked up was this, Quantum Redshift, partly because it was only a pound, but also because it's one of the only for Xbox games. And although I think there's well over a hundred in that category, I still think it's something I might look into collecting, at least partly. So for the final part, I'll give it all a good polish, for which I got this. Lee from Morphine making it approved polish. It was developed by the British Museum, so if it's good enough for their relics, it's good enough for mine. Also to note when putting all back together and putting the stickers back on, they don't look too bad, so it was definitely worth the effort. And there we go, a working Xbox. I may put some mods in there later, and actually Control Alt Reese recently put out a new video containing some nice ones. But for now, I'm going to keep it as a stock Xbox that I only got for £5. Apart from the AV cable, the controller, and the game. And I did get new thermal paste. Plus, I, uh, I suppose I bought that polish. Oh, and the band for the drive. And I got the capacitor. And I had to get new lubricant. 